What's it like to own a C8 Corvette? Well, Ugly Mug is here to tell you. It's been a while since I've done a video. The last one I did was a local event called Cars and Coffee, of which I was able to rub elbows with a few car gurus and uh, just proud car owners. But today, you know, I've had my Corvette for about four and a half months, and I just want to share with you what my experiences are, you know, with having owned this Corvette for quite some time. But to give you a little bit of history, uh, this is my second Corvette. I did have a a C6 back in 2009. It was actually a 2009 3LT uh, coupe. It was yellow. And I had it for about three years. And the reason I got it was because ever since I sat in a Corvette, which was probably back in 82, you know, I sat in a, uh, I sat in the C4. And ever since I was just sold and uh, determined that one day I would be a Corvette owner. So I fulfilled that dream and I bought one in 09. But like I said, I kept it for about three years and I, I moved on. And uh, primarily just because of priorities, you know, I was still raising a child. And right now my child has grown fast forward to 2021. So what I decided to do was, and as you can see, my, one of my videos playing in the background here, I thought it would add, add a little bit of a spice to the video here. And I also have my blue shirt on you know, because it's, uh, it's actually a rapid blue C8 that I own. I picked it up. I picked it up at the end of March at a dealer in St. Pete. And you know, when I tell people how I acquired it, they look at me in, asma in amazement and then just uh, tell me how lucky I am because the way I got it, you know, when you consider the demand this vehicle is in, uh, I had decided, uh, I guess around mid-March, maybe second or third week in March, that I would go ahead and decide to uh, pursue purchasing a C8 and literally by the end of the month you know I made it by the skin of my teeth on the 31st I actually took delivery of of a brand new C8 3LT coupe with the Z51 package and uh, again it comes in rapid blue you can see it in the background here and uh, playing in a video on my TV and you know I've had it ever since so again you know I'm just here to share my experiences with you uh, where I am in my life right now, you know, I'm about to turn 59 and that has a little bit to do with my experience here too because generally when I'm out in public people perceive I'm much younger than I am and then you have this, you know, you just have, there's this tag that goes out that, you know, Corvette owners are usually a bunch of old guys, that sort of thing and uh, I guess I might be one of them but, you know, I don't necessarily come across that way but with my experiences though, they have been somewhat unique and uh, I'll try not to make it too controversial because you know some of my experiences are, are related to that very thing and it's funny I don't even look at it I don't even uh, look for these things to happen but you know uh, I'll start off with some of the negative I guess but and I have to kind of laugh at it you know because sometimes while I'm driving this car you know I get dirty looks and I think it's because you know I am living in the south so I got a few people that don't necessarily look like me and they, you know, they, uh, you know, I can kind of see them creeping up, want to take a look at my car, man, or I might even be at a gas station, man. Once in a while, I'll catch somebody giving me a really dirty look, you know, but, you know, to those folks, I just have to, like, laugh at them and say, because, you know, hey, I'm driving and you're not, you know, but that's a, that's a small minority of the whole experience. You know, most, most of the reactions have been positive. You know, I get thumbs up all the time. And I uh, get into a lot of conversations, whether I'm sitting at a light or whether I'm pumping gas or something like that. And I get in friendly conversations with folks. People are looking at the car in amazement. They want to take a look at it. You know, I've had times where I'll just go through the car and just kind of show them what it does, you know, what it has and everything. And when they look at it, man, I just see the, I can see the enthusiasm in, on their face. 
because they're just so happy to see it and they're just in such amazement when they see what this car looks like. And many people don't even know it's a Corvette. You know, of course, I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you watch a lot of different people's videos, people mistake them for Lamborghinis, Ferraris or McLarens or something like that, you know. And then, uh, you know, that becomes a part of the conversation. But generally the conversations I get are all, you know, quite pleasant. And then to add to that, you know, going to the car meets, you know, I've been to a number of car meets right now. I'd say probably about five of them, five of them I've been to. And of course, they've all been positive. I've been able to meet a few other car enthusiasts and uh, been able to kind of exchange information with them and, uh, and they've become acquaintances, you know, that sort of thing. So if you watch my videos, you'll see some of the uh, interaction I've had with folks, you know, but uh, overall, like I said, this experience has been really, really good. You know, sometimes while I'm driving this car, you know, I do kind of feel like a rock star once in a while, especially while I'm at the mall and I'm getting out of the car at the valet. You know, people are turning their heads and trying to kind of see who it is. And then they see this, this, this little guy, you know, oh, he's not somebody we know, but you know, that's okay. I mean, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm soaking it all up, man. I'm just, you know, I'm not really a superficial person, but you know, I know how hard I've worked in order to be able to accomplish this. So I do look at it as somewhat of an accomplishment. And there's a part of me that just, uh, I, I am soaking it up. And I'm just having a whole lot of fun with it. You know, it, it is a certain rock star element that I'm enjoying with the whole thing, especially being a person that doesn't really like to draw attention to myself. You know, for that type of person, this isn't the car to buy, but you know, hey, sometimes things just don't make sense. But you know, this is a car that I wanted. I love the Corvette. I've loved it ever since I was a child. And uh, well, like I said, I plan to hold on to this one for quite some time. And uh, there's just so much more I plan on experiencing with it. Right now with my schedule being so full, you know, I'm still working full time. I have two YouTube channels and, you know, uh, I'm back in the gym now because, you know, if you, saw, if you see one of my earlier videos, I had a herniated disc back in December and that was while I was healing from knee surgery. So I've not been in my gym, you know, physical fitness and keeping in shape is a big part of my life and it's always been like that. But, you know, ever since August, you know, I had the knee problem and uh, like I said, I had the October surgery. And while I was healing from that, I had a uh, herniated disc hit me on a few days before Christmas. So I spent my holidays fully dependent on people, people that cared about me, that kept, kept me going, you know, just catering to my basic needs just to get through the day because I, I couldn't do anything on my own for a while. And I finally had that surgery in January. So needless to say, I couldn't ride my motorcycle, which by the way, I have had a, a motorcycle I just picked up in, in September. So I've not been able to ride that and, uh, you know, so I've had a lot of issues that have been kind of hampering my health, but nothing that was life threatening, you know, so I've been out of the gym, losing a lot of weight because I've been inactive. I had to intermittent fast to kind of keep myself from gaining unnecessary weight and all that sort of thing. So now here I am 15 pounds underweight. So I'm happy to say that I've been back in the gym for two weeks. So that's keeping me really busy too, on top of working full time. You know, I'm doing my, my uh, six day a week, six days a week, I'm doing my workouts to kind of get my cardio back, build my muscle back and all that sort of thing. And then whatever time I have left, I try to, you know, other than socializing, it's like to get my videos back going. So it's gonna take a lot of effort to continue getting, getting these videos out. But I was really determined to get this one video out that gave my experiences, you know, of the C8 Corvette ownership after you know, three months was the first goal. Well, three months came and went, then it was four months. And I kind of jokingly tell people that, hey, yeah, I guess I'll put a six month video out because I sure, sure haven't gotten to it yet. Well, finally, here I am. I'm finally working on a video that shows, uh, just to want to share with you what it's been like to own this C8 for X number of months. So I guess you were looking at uh, April, May, June, July, you know, four and a half months now. It's going on five months. So I'm hoping to have this video posted because I've still, I still have some other footage to add. So I'm hoping that by the end of the month, uh, and I'm not sure when this is going to post, but right now it's, I think it's the 22nd of August. And I'm hoping to get everything put together, you know, by the end of the month so I can get this video posted so I can share all of this with you. Um, but again, you know, the overwhelming majority of my experiences have been positive, overwhelmingly positive, you know, and uh, I've posted a few videos if you check out my channel you'll see a few different uh, things that I share as far as the uh, features 
of the car itself and I do plan to do some more features that are more in-depth with regard to some of the specific specific features like the one I did on the roof on the uh, removable top you know that was that was in the original features video and then I went with more detail with that one I'm going to be looking in different areas of the car and give you more detailed videos on some of the different features you on the car itself and I'll, I'll be able to share a few hacks with you too I have another one in mind that I'm planning on doing I won't disclose it yet but it's basically a hack that I'll be sharing with you that uh, it's a good money saver and it's a nice way to uh, you know keep keep the car maintained properly again I'm not going to give away too much at this point in time but with that being said uh, I'm going to go out in the car and we're going to go ahead and do some of it from there and then uh, I'll be back here in the studio to kind of share a little bit more with you before we close out. There she is right there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get behind the wheel and I'll see you when I get there. Okay, here we are behind the wheel, giving you a little bit of the driving experience, just kind of sharing it with you. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do the whole video in a studio environment, just narrating everything. So I thought I'd take it on the road and kind of give you a little, little taste and just kind of give you this content where it really needs to happen. So now I'm here sitting at a red light now. But anyway, yeah, so this experience has been really good. It's been, it's been great, not good, it's been great. And uh, owning this car has been, just something that like I could never imagine you know sometimes when I get behind the wheel I think damn this is it's just really my car you know especially when I look at this interior man this interior is just immaculate GM really stepped it up in the way of this interior so I'm trying not to turn it into a review but I gotta tell you how I feel about it you know it's really 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 immaculate so I'm just going to head out to the main boat here and just kind of get a few minutes behind the wheel. I'm not going to spend too much time here just to give you a few minutes, really. Just give you a few minutes of my content. Uh, I hope you all recognize Jimmy in the background. I'll give you a little bit of, you know, a good fan of Jimmy. So I kind of, kind of throw him in there and give us a little bit of effect, you know what I mean? Anyway, here we are, headed down the strip, you know, and on this road and really just a lot of the major roads around town here, again, like some of what I've experienced. One thing I, I didn't mention earlier was that I can't tell you how often I get challenged you know, while I'm, while I'm behind the wheel of this car. And it's not other Corvettes, it's not Mustang, GTs, nothing like that. Usually it's somebody in a, a beat up Honda that he kinda, well, one particular case I saw this guy, you know, he, he rolled up next to me in a beat up Honda, man. I mean, it was such bad, it was in such bad shape. The panels were falling off and it was just a horrible looking car. And then he had the nerve to have this muffler on it to make it loud. So while I'm just cruising down the road, he kind of pulls up next to me as I'm moving and wants to kind of rev his engine a little bit. You know, I don't know if he was trying to intimidate me or what, man. And then he pulls off and accelerates from there. And I'm just looking at him, shaking my head, man. I'm like, you know, hey. Now to be fair, my first car was a 72 Nova. You know, I did a few things to it, but this was back in the early 80s. And I didn't act like that. You know, I had my Kragers on it and everything. I didn't really do anything like performance wise. A lot of it was aesthetics, but I didn't go acting like I wanted to race somebody, especially somebody in the car that uh, I knew I had absolutely nothing to challenge him with. So, you know, I've had that happen quite a bit. Or I may just have people pulling up in a highway. They kind of pull up right next to me while we're going 60 or 70 and they just want to see who's behind the wheel, I guess. You know, and then they kind of pull up and then they just kind of fall back or 
or they just kind of keep on going or something. But I always notice in the corner of my eye, somebody trying to get a glimpse, you know, not of the car, but they want to see who's behind the wheel. And, you know, that, that kind of gets old. I'm kind of used to it. That's kind of worn thin by now, but, you know, I just kind of play it off. But that doesn't really take away from the experience. I guess that's just somebody being curious. But these, these little toy cars, man, like that Honda I mentioned, I call them the little toy cars because they really don't have anything in a way of performance. And these people have the nerve to try to act like they want to challenge me, man. You know, I've, I've got a lot of people with cars that are far inferior to this one. And they're revving their engine, man, like they want to show me something. And, you know, I, for the life of me, can't figure out what drives them to do that. You know, unless, of course, I'm giving it a pessimistic approach. Maybe they're revving their engine just trying to tell me, hey, you're a nice car. Maybe I don't know the language of young people. You know, I'm, I was young back in the 80s. So, you know, I don't know what they're really trying to say. So, I mean, I could be totally wrong. Maybe they're revving their engine to just kind of say hello or something. Not really sure, but, but my language, for somebody in my age group, I usually interpret a thumbs up or something like that as something positive. So, you know, I don't know. Again, it's just a part of the experience, you know. But the greatest experience is really, like I mentioned, you know, about the kids and the fence and the daycare center and just the people wanting to get their picture taken with it. You know, this car brings me a lot of joy, but when it brings others joy, especially young people like kids and things like that, man, that's really cool. That really gives me a great feeling, man. And that's definitely one of the real highs that I get by owning this car, man, just to kind of see the smile on their faces. That's that's the thing I get back to as far as when I think about the, uh, the satisfaction of having a car like this. You know, not to mention the performance, of course. You know, that's a different category altogether. That brings a different joy. You know, I've still yet to take it over to a to a road where I could actually do some launching. I have not done the launching yet. I'm gonna take that launch control and uh, I've got a place in mind where I'm gonna take it. And I'm gonna mess with that a little bit, man. And I wanna see exactly what this car can do, you know, in a zero to 60 performance calculation. Then I'll get to mess with the, uh, with the PDR and the, you know, the, the, the whole sport mode thing, you know, that goes with it. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to. And that'll be some more experience that gets added to my overall experience. You know, when all is said and done. Yeah, so. Again, man, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's given me a high that uh, you can't get in many places. And I think, I think a lot of, not just Corvette owners, but just car people in general, you know, appreciate a car like this because I'm, you know, constantly exchanging thumbs up with people that are not in Corvettes. You know, so that's kind of cool too, man. You know, just sharing a whole, you know, giving props back and forth to other car owners. You know, because it basically says that we share that same car DNA, you know, and that's a, that's a really cool fraternity to be a part of, you know. There's a guy right now, man, I can see him looking back out of his driver's side window, trying to check it out, you know. But again, I get it all the time, man, you know, it's really cool. It's pretty cool, man, and then he pulled up next to me for a minute, then he kind of went on, you know. But I ain't hating, man, ain't no wrong with that. So, anyway, uh, that's all I got here from the car. You know, just kind of sharing a few thoughts. I don't want to make this video too long. You know, when I go back into the studio, I have a little bit more to say and then, uh, you know, we'll be done. But I definitely don't want to make it too long. Just here to have you hear me flapping my app, you know, <laughs> for too long here. You could probably get bored after a while. I don't really know for sure, but... But anyway, we're going to make our way back over to the house and then uh, we'll finish up. So I'm back in the studio, or should I say back in the house, <laughs> in my studio environment, you know, my family room here, you know, with the TV in the background. That's my studio. I actually have a few different places in the house where I like to shoot my videos, and this is one of them. And I seem to kind of like this one quite a bit. I think it just has the natural background of the house itself, 
which kind of indicates a little bit of my personality, such as my favorite football teams, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so as, as far as my experiences, yeah, I've got, I've got a, a few things in addition to what I mentioned earlier, you know, to share with you, you know, particularly to surround the whole rock star element. You know, it is so funny, man, because I, I tell people, in fact, I need to get my phone here and use it as a prop if I can find it. I don't even know where that thing is. Let's see here. Okay, I found my phone here. All right. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I get in conversations with people and they just kind of ask me about the car and different things like that. And, you know, I kind of tell them, I said, I tell people that one of the most common uh, visions I have, you know, actually what I really experience in life is this very one right here. You know, and that's the motion that I see because I can't go anywhere without seeing somebody filming the car and just taking pictures and that sort of thing. You know, just yesterday I was meeting a friend somewhere and I was parked and his whole family is walking by, but the son, who was a young kid, he had to be about 10 years old, he was just looking at the car, just smiling and everything. He couldn't get away from it. And it happened to still be sitting and an engine was running. And uh, you can tell they wanted to do something. And next thing you know, the kid wanted to stand in front of it. So they kind of motioned to me, hey, is it okay if we take pictures? And I motioned, I said, yeah, absolutely, go right ahead. You know, even while I'm sitting in the car. So he goes to the corner, he stands in front of the car, they're taking pictures. So I thought I'd have a little fun with it. So while the kid was standing, you know, uh, he was standing near the front wheel, wheel, and, you know, facing the camera, and then I just kind of hit the, I revved the engine a couple of times, you know, for him while they were taking pictures of him, man, and he got a real kick out of it, man. So it's nice to bring joy to others, you know, when they see their reaction to the car. You know, I do see a lot of children sticking their head out of the uh, vehicle that they're passing me by, either on the highway or either walking in the street somewhere, you know, they're just kind of looking at the car, and they've got this big, huge smile on their face. I drove by a daycare center one day, you know, and they're standing. They're all the, I was, I was at a light, and I look over to my right, and there's a chain link fence that basically, you know, where the kids were kind of contained in the playground area. And while I was sitting at the light, there was a whole bunch of kids. It had to be about 15 or 20 kids, all lined up at the fence, just staring at the car while I was sitting at a light. And, you know, I was really tickled by that because you know, I felt, I, was, I felt like I was bringing some joy to those kids. I mean, I think it just made their day. They just had a, a whole lot of fun with it, you know. So those are the real positive things that I, uh, I experienced with owning this C8 Corvette. Now, I'm sure a lot of you viewers who I uh, value so much, man, I can't tell you how thankful I am that you're actually spending time with me here. But I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you're a C8 owner, I'm sure you have some similar experiences to share. I would love it if you could just leave some comments, maybe letting me know what you've kind of come across and see what kind of fun and joy you've brought to others. You know, it's the same thing at the car meets, you know, depending on the type of car meet it is, you know, I've had some where there was a whole line or long lines of, of different Corvettes, you know, many of them were C8s. And I've been to other car shows where there might have been five Corvettes total and mine was the only C8. And in, in, in such cases, you know, my C8 being the only one there, people huddle up around it, man, and they're just like, man, they're checking it out, and they're absolutely loving it. So it gives me an opportunity to just share some information with them, and I can see the joy. You know, sometimes these are uh, Corvette veterans that don't have a C8, and they're, they're talking about their car, and, you know, I appreciate the previous generations as well. I'm really fond of the C7, but, you know, I may, I may have people that may own a C5 or something like that, you know, and we're talking about my C8, and they have a lot of questions themselves. So we'll talk about it, man, and like I said, we'll just have, you know, we'll just have a whole lot of fun with it. And I'll tell them myself. I said, you know what, I love having these conversations with people that have DNA like I have. And that's kind of what I call it. Anybody that loves a car, and specifically a Corvette, I kind of tell them, I say, we have the same DNA. And uh, that's an absolutely wonderful thing, man, because, I mean, there's a whole lot of us out there. And it's really nice to come across others that share that same passion, you know, like I do. So I could go all day with, um, you know, what I feel about, you know, my experiences and sharing them with you. I could go all day long about the different ones that I've had. But that's kind of, in a nutshell, you know, what I've seen, what I've witnessed, and what I've experienced, you know, with owning the C8. 
And I haven't even talked about making the videos. I kind of touched on it earlier, but you know, making the videos and just sharing information about the different mods that I've, that I've had done, you know, it's interesting because you know, I would be at a car meet and somebody would ask me about something or I might share something with them about one of the uh, mods that I made. You know, like for example, the uh, distraught tower where it collects water. They had absolutely no idea about that. You know, they didn't even think that they might want to go ahead and take a look at it by pulling, pulling the plastic cover out so they can see it. You know, they may discover that they do have water collecting. So, you know, now you have a person that you didn't even know that there was a problem, you know, or, uh, you know, some sort of, a, I call it an engineering flaw. But now they know they can kind of check it out and then maybe they can go ahead and modify their vehicle to keep the corrosion from happening as a result of the water collecting, you know, so things like that to be able to share with other CA owners, you know, where they can actually, uh, you know, learn a little something, you know, from someone such as myself. And I am by no means no expert on the C8, you know, because before I got mine in, Mar on, in March, you know, I would say just take me to a month prior, you know, in February. I knew nothing about the C8. All I knew that the Corvette had come out with a, with a new mid-engine vehicle. And that's all I knew. I didn't know anything about it. And uh, I think what put me over the top in making a purchase was uh, in early March, I can still remember, it was a Friday, it was March 5th. And there are a lot of reasons I remember that day, but I remember uh, I was coming back from a doctor appointment, you know, my neurosurgeon for my herniated disc surgery. And uh, I was only about six weeks post-op at the time, but I was driving, you know, here in Orlando, I was driving on one of the highways you know, on the way back in the afternoon, and I saw a rapid blue C8 on the road, and I immediately got on the phone and called a good friend of mine who has a C5, and he and I have talked Corvette for many years. And uh, I told him, I said, man, I saw this light blue, I, call, I said, this light blue uh, C8 Corvette, man, it is absolutely stunning. And then ever since that moment, you know, you know, when something hits you, man, there's nothing that's gonna stop it. And I started having the wheels turning. I said, man, I need to get another Corvette. I need to get another one. And, uh, you know, so I start going online. I'm looking at them, I'm learning about them. And literally less than 10 days later, I'm researching dealerships all over the place. And I'm finding out that no one has anyone. I mean, no one has a C8 available to just buy and take with you. I'm starting to realize that the heavy demand and the little supply that there was for these cars. But I got really lucky because I found this one particular dealer in St. Pete and I found out later that they spec their cars out and they just order them to put them in a the lot. So my original choice was a, uh, an Elkhart Blue because I really loved the way it looked when I saw one at a car show when they, the C7 first got unveiled. I had gone to the local, uh, it was the Orange County Convention Center. Every, th every Thanksgiving weekend, they have, a, uh, they have a car show where all the, the manufacturers, most of them, are showing their new models. And I was able to sit in the Elkhart Blue C7. And then I saw one on the road, and the way the sun shined off of it, man, it was beautiful, man. It was just lovely. And ever since then, that was the color of choice for me, even though I was no longer a Corvette owner. But anyway, when they, uh, you know, I checked this dealership out online. I saw their website. They didn't have any Elkhart Blues, but they had a couple of Rapid Blues. And they had an orange one, they had a white one. They had about maybe seven or eight different Corvettes on the lot or either on the way, you know, in transit. So I saw the one that I wanted, it was a 3LT, and, and it came out to about, you know, the MSRP was around 85 one, the way it was spec'd out. But fortunately, Rapid Blue, having seen one just a few weeks prior, was my second choice or possibly even my new first choice. And the way they had it spec'd out, I wanted, I wanted at minimum a, a 2LT. And they had a 3LT and it was loaded. So I decided to contact them. You know, I found out of course that they had this real heavy premium, but you know, everything I had learned at the time, you know, through that brief period was, it was either go ahead and pay the premium and get this vehicle or try to get in line and put it in order and you're gonna be waiting a year or longer you know, before you get your hands on one. And I was like, I, I don't know if I wanted to wait like that. So, you know, I contacted him, talked to him a little bit, got a little acquainted and everything like that, went back and forth. Next thing you know, I'm taking delivery in the 31st. And that's basically how I got my Corvette. You know, when I tell people, yeah, I decided in mid-March I was gonna go ahead and get one. And by the end of the month, I got it. You know, and they asked me, how the heck did you pull that off? I said, well, I got lucky. 
you know, there was a dealership so-and-so that they had one. And uh, that's how I was able to get it to happen. So it all worked out well for me. It was a deal that uh, everybody was happy with. You know, granted, you know, you know, I paid a lot for it, but at the end of the day, you know, if I hadn't done that, I'd still be waiting. And I really didn't want to do that. So, you know, I went, went on and bit the bullet, and I have absolutely no regrets to this very day. Like I said, the experiences have been absolutely wonderful. I've been loving every minute of it. And uh, like I said, no regrets. And I'm still continuing to have fun with it. You know, I so look forward to getting behind the wheel of the C8 Rapid Blue Z51 every single time. You know, every single time I want to get behind the wheel and I just, I have so much excitement and I just want to go ahead and just get in that car and just go. And it is a lot of fun. So I don't know what else, else there is to say, but, uh, you know, uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear what your stories are. So definitely leave a comment for Ugly Mug. I would love to hear what you have to say, you know, and uh, I'll be happy to respond to your comments if you have any questions. But again, you know, uh, I feel like this is one of the best decisions I ever made. And, uh, you know, I call it a pre-retirement gift. I'm looking to retire probably in three years. You know, at that time I'll turn 62. And then at that time I'll decide, okay, do I want to go another three or do I want to go ahead and call it quits at that time? But, you know, either way, I've got my C8. So, like I said, I'm really happy with it. So if you like my content, yeah, we're at that part of the video. If you like my content, please hit the like button. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And then, like I said, how many times have I asked you already to please leave a comment, but hit the bell to be notified, you know, uh, next time I put up a video and then you'll be notified right away and you can kind of check out my content. I've not been doing this that long, but uh, I'm just, you know, I'm not really, uh, how would I say it? It's not so structured. I'm just kind of sharing my passion. I'm just kind of telling you how I'm feeling about the whole thing. And that's pretty much what it is, man. I'm just having fun with the whole thing. I'm just absorbing it and uh, like I'm just living it up right now. This is kind of the greatest part of my life, I think, man. I'm just like living the way I want. I'm doing the things I want to do. And, um, you know, God's got my back here. You know what I mean? I've had some setbacks, some recent setbacks, as you, as you know. And I've had some far bigger ones in the past earlier in my life. So... You know, I kind of feel like I'm living on borrowed time. I almost lost my life on a couple of occasions, and here I am still going. So I really believe God's got my back. I think he blessed me with this C8, and uh, I hope he continues to bless me more and more as time goes on. You know, I truly believe if we live our lives right, if I, I'm sorry, I truly believe that if we live our lives right, you know, God will reward us. And I truly believe that. So let's continue to do so. You know, I know Corvette owners are really, really good people. I've had good experiences with every single one that I've met, and I'm counting on it to continue. So with that being said, this is Ugly Mug signing out, and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video.